So team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Raven here with another video. And today, uh, we got formally introduced to Raven's new offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin. Uh, and I will say that his press conference, it went as expected. There were little surprises here and there. I, I felt like with some of the pettiness that Todd Munkin got, I said, oh, man, he, he fits right in with John Harbaugh and them. Like this dude, would, would, he took a shot at Jameis Winston because he talked about um, his quarterbacks that he had in, in Tampa Bay. He said, oh, yeah, we love to throw the ball there. We couldn't really run it so much, but we love to throw the ball there. Sometimes we, we threw so much we end up throwing to the other team too, but we love to throw the ball there. I said, whoa. All right now, and then um, he also talked about the how the fullback position, how, how is 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 being diminished. It's not the same as it once was. You don't really see fullbacks like that as much anymore. And I said, uh oh, I hope Pat Ricard not watching this. And then he 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 took a shot. He didn't take a shot at Pat Ricard necessarily, but he took a shot at Greg Roman. And he said, we're going to we're gonna ask, in our offense, we're going to ask players to do what we know they can do. We're not going to ask somebody something that they can't do. We're not going to ask them to do something that they can't do. And then he talked about, we're not going to ask a, a fullback to be, what did he say, a, a matchup problem against a linebacker? He said something like that. I said, oh, whoa. Oh, you, you came through taking shots. That's what it is, Todd. It's monkin' time, baby. But anyway, um, he also talked about, he was asked about Odell Beckham Jr., uh, and he was like, hold on, can, can, can I speak on him? Can I speak on him? Oh, yeah, he's not under contract, so I can speak on him. And he said he loved Odell Beckham Jr. And it felt like when, when we were listening to Todd Munkin speak, it sounded like obviously he's a professional and whatnot. He's been offensive coordinator and whatnot for a long time, been to a lot of different places on a, both uh, a professional and a collegiate level. I mean, both are professional levels, but uh, he's been to uh, quite a few different places. But it also sounded like we were listening to a fan as well. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. And what I mean when I say that is when he spoke about, like, he spoke about Odell Beckham Jr. When he was speaking about him, he said, oh, yeah, I would love to have him and whatnot. So, hey, maybe that, maybe Ravens will make him, we'll see. But anyway, he said, I would love to have him because uh, he obviously coached him before. Uh, but he talked about how with Odell Beckham Jr., uh, him as a face. He said, with, with, with NBA players, they all, they all are faces because they obviously they don't have any helmets on. You see them all the time. But in the NFL, it's harder to be a face. It comes with a lot more pressure and whatnot. And with Odell Beckham Jr. being a face in the league um, and, and a playmaker too, like so many people like portray him one way, but he said, I don't think there's anything wrong with a playmaker wanting the ball. And I'm like, man, I, I've been saying the exact same thing, specifically about Odell Beckham Jr. too, for a long time. Because I agree. Like, playmakers want to make plays, especially wide receivers. People, I, I, I hate that, that word, oh, diva. He's a diva. He's a diva. They call this receiver diva, that receiver diva. We don't want any divas on our team. No, I, I want receivers who want the ball on the team. Oh, I want that. So I like how he spoke about that. Um, he spoke as not only a fan, but he also spoke as a, as a friend too. Talked about Mark Andrews. He said a long time ago when him and uh, I forgot who his colleague was, they were riding to go see Mark Andrews as a sophomore in high school. He said Mark Andrews probably don't remember, but we were riding to go see him. He said he was, he was upset. He was cursing up a storm on the way there. Uh, but he said they went to go see Mark Andrews. They went to go see this quarterback and wide receivers throwing catch passes. I think the quarterback, was it Kyle Trask or Kyle Allen? I forgot who the quarterback was. Kyle something. Uh, but the wide receiver was Mark Andrews. So he got ties. Um, and then speaking of ties, we always talk about how with the hardballs, they, you know, family ties, the hardball, hashtag hood hardball, he always going to put his people on. And that's a question that I just, I hadn't thought about and I hadn't wondered about because I kind of forgot about it for a little bit. But the question like, man, whenever the hard, hardball hires somebody, you know, they all got they got ties. And I hadn't thought about that until uh, Harbaugh brought it up. And Harbaugh said, I think his sister, he said his sister went to Georgia, something like that. His sister knew Munkin and what. I, I forgot exactly what it was because while I was listening to this press conference, I wasn't fully engaged with it i didn't take notes like i normally do because i got like a lot of significant stuff on my mind that's just really been bothering me since about uh 12 today and it's just it, it's been stressing me out like crazy i know it's a big side note but it, it's just been stressing me out like crazy man so 
because it, 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 it just impacts so much. Family is good, health is good, everything, but it's just it's some other stuff. But anyway, um I, I love y'all and I appreciate you all sort of being an outlet uh for that. Um but anyway, uh with Munkin, he spoke about that. Uh he spoke about using uh playmakers. Of course he was asked the question about Lamar Jackson. Um if like him knowing the uncertainty of Lamar Jackson, but him still taking a job. I and mean, we all knew that question was going to be asked. And he said that, hey, well, Eric DaCosta and Harbaugh, they're the best in the business. And I know they're going to take care of it. Uh, he was asked why he wanted to, why he joined the Ravens, why, why he came here. And he said, well, I wanted to go somewhere where it was a good uh, organization, good franchise and whatnot. Where they had a culture established already He said um, the Ravens are very similar to Georgia I was like mm -hmm, okay now you, uh, you already got the job You, you ain't got to sell yourself You already got the job you, you got it but anyway He said the Ravens are really similar to Georgia um, But yeah he It, it, was, it was a cool presser it, it, it was a cool presser There was one part where he wasn't so team Keep it clean I know there was some of y'all that shared that Y'all appreciated that um, but yeah, the, 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 the presser, when he spoke about Lamar, he talked about, oh, that was another thing when I talked about him, like speaking, not just as a coach, but as a fan as well, because you don't really hear coaches speak like that. Um, especially coaches for the Baltimore Ravens, because he talked about how he felt like Lamar Jackson was underrated as a passer. And I was like, oh, hold up now. You which you got a YouTube channel too, Todd? Like, let me know, man. But anyway, um, he he talked about that, and and he said that he spoke about narratives. He spoke about narratives that have been being put out uh, when it's come to Lamar Jackson uh, from when he came in the league. And I was like, oh, oh, you you saying some stuff now, Todd? All right. Um, but I I appreciated that. Um, he talked about how the NFL, the, the game, it's a game of space. He said you got to use all uh, 53 and a half uh, yards of the field. Or well, wide, how wide it is. He said you got to use all of that. Uh, it's a game about spacing. He talked about uh, passing concepts. So you got to have passing concepts that, that match your running concepts and whatnot. And he, he just talked about how things got to just, they got to flow. They got to flow. He talked about uh, the time that gets spent because somebody asked, oh, what if Lamar Jackson, he misses or skips out on all the training camp and da 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 because we know how this contract thing could possibly go. It got a lot of different routes it could take, but if that was one of the routes that it took, they asked him, well, well, well how would that infect him? And he said, well, he would be behind, but at the same time, it's football. Like, he knows football, and he said, I feel like sometimes we, we make this, like, bigger or more complicated than it needs to be. And I was like, mm, well... Er, that's true But he also did talk about uh, repetition He also did talk about just doing stuff over and over And getting more acclimated with it uh, He talked about the passing game He talked about the run game um, He just talked about well, He talked about different schemes and the players and stuff And, and again, everything that he said was great uh, But now it's just about action It's about action uh, it's it's about putting it together. It's about making it happen. Um, it's it's about using your guys. He talked about how he wanted his offense to be not player centric. What what was the phrase that he used? But he said it. He said he wanted it to be about the players. I forgot the exact terminology that he used for it. But basically, what he was saying is that. He wants the players to be featured in it and, and the, the players be used to their specialties. He wants the players' abilities to be showcased. And he said that's what players want too. Players want to know that. They want to know, hey, how are you going to feature me? How am I going to get my opportunities? How am I going to get my chances? How am I going to be able to show off my skills? He spoke about that. And again, everything sounded good. So now... Introductory press conference is done. We got to know you a little bit more. Cool. I, I saw some people say, hey, Todd Mungin for head coach. I said, oh, boy, okay now. But that was great. Now it's time to get to it. Well, I mean, you don't even know what team you fielding out there. You don't know who your quarterback is going to be. You don't know who you're receiving. There's a lot that you don't know. 
So maybe it ain't time to get to it yet, but uh, it's, it's it's time to start settling in. You do got some players who you know are going to be there, but you got a lot of unknowns too. So, yeah, that and that's what we want from this offense, man. Obviously, we all know that the Ravens got to improve in the passing game. We know that. Um, but Ravens also need to improve and, and he talked about thing talk about scoring more points, talked about scoring in the red zone. Cause that's big too. Cause there were times Ravens will move the ball. Then they get into the red zone, it's like they go in reverse. They just stop. Everything stops. But now it's it's really time for Ravens to open this thing up. He talked about um quarterbacks. He said, Well, you sometimes you gotta give a little, you gotta get a little. He he talked about um what are you willing to not sacrifice but what are you willing to give up I forgot, I forgot exactly what phrase he used but he talked about do you want to have this this six six quarterback who's just who's a statue or do you want to have somebody who's uh maybe a little bit shorter but just got a crazy athletic ability and he said it's a it's a different game now the game is different it's changing. And it's, he said it's about scoring points. He was like, hey, that's you see fantasy football. Fantasy football is all about points. He said you can look at a, a game where the score is 40. You can look at two teams and the score is 41 to 40. And then you look at another two teams and the score is, uh, what did he say, 7 to 7 to 3 or 7-7? Seven, seven? I forgot what he said, but it's a super low-scoring game. And he was like, well, you, people will look at the two teams where it's 41-40 and you say, oh, those, those guys are killing it. Because he knows it's all about points. It's all about scoring. And that's true. So I, I appreciated how he took us through his mindset, not just as a coach, but also as a fan of the game, too. It, it was nice hearing that perspective when you heard him speak. So, again, now it's about actions. And, again, we, we won't be able to see actions until the first game of the season. And then even then, we won't be able to really know, like, all right, is this Ravens offense really improving? Until like I say week four, five or six around there Because then they will have built up a level of consistency by then They will have more of an identity by weeks five or six Because week one could be great Week two could be terrible Week three could be right in the middle and we, we won't know consistency early on Preseason I can't count that because that's when stuff will just be super basic They just sort of going through the motions there and training camp and all that, you know, training camp, you're going to hear the stories about, oh, man, this offense looks great. Oh, man, they're installing this, that, and the third. Oh, man, they're doing this, they're doing that. Oh, man, this guy, he's really been killing it all training camp. Because we always, it's, it's always somebody who we hear about. They kill it in training camp, then regular season comes around, and they know where to be found. And that could be for a variety of reasons, but... That it, it happens every year Every year And That's why it's important I, I can't even say It's important not to buy into the hype Cause I mean we fans And around that time of the, of the off season It's slow We like we fiending for football So when we hear something in training camp Or we actually go to the training camp You get all high You see a big play You go yeah Let's go And then you, you envision What that could look like In a regular season game he say, oh, man, this, this guy could be something. But now it's all about how you're going to incorporate those players in the regular season, how you're going to get them involved. He also talked about how with his offense, he wants it to be where you got to worry about all five guys. All five. Because, of course, you got the five offensive linemen, so those guys are set. But then you got your quarterback, so that's six guys. But then you got five more people, five more weapons. Whether it's receivers, whether it's running backs, whether it's tight ends, you got five more people. So I think he should actually said you got to worry about six people, well, depending on who your quarterback is. So, okay, I get why he said five. He don't know who his quarterback going to be. But anyway, we, we get what you were saying. So, again, shout out to Todd Munkin. I am, let's just hope that this offense, it takes off. Let's just hope that he does a, a phenomenal job. Let's just hope that this thing goes even better than expected. Um, another question that somebody asked, and my apologies that we all over the place because some of these questions are just coming to my head off of memory. Um, another question that somebody asked was, um, how do you deal with all that pressure? How do you deal with all that pressure, especially uh, being, being the Ravens offensive coordinator because these fans are very passionate and they, they want this offense to be fixed? And he said, well, 
He said, well, it's, it's, it's pressure. It's pressure with anything. He said at Georgia, uh, with all the great talent that we had, we were expected to go at least 10-2 and two every year. At least. So there was pressure there. And he said uh, here with, with, with the Ravens, he said, uh, I bet nobody was asking that question in 2019. I said, ooh, okay, monkey. All right, now. Hey, you, I mean, you ain't lying. We did, we did ask, like, all right, how they going to build off of that? And how they going to evolve off of that after that season? But that you got it, monkey. So, again, we're going to see. We're going to see. Uh, but anyway, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Uh, I, I really love y'all and really, 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 really love y'all. Thank you for everything. Thank you for helping out. Uh, thank you for uh, being a listening ear uh, all the time, man. I appreciate y'all. We out.